Hi, I'm Chris Johnson from Work Visa Lawyers. Um, we're very lucky today to be joined by Scott Johnson, who is a uh, English tutor and he works with Swoosh English. And he's going to give us uh, some tips and answer some questions we've got about uh, English language testing and, and how best to prepare for it. Um, so uh, he's uh, taught thousands of students in the past um, to increase their English language abilities. And um, so we're very lucky to be speaking with him. And um, of course, what we're trying to do is to provide you with some useful knowledge. And um, so I'm sure he's going to help with that. So hello, Scott. Hello, Chris, and hello, students. Thanks very much for having me today. I look forward to helping you guys out with your IELTS and your PTE preparation. I'd be interested to know first, um, uh, what are your qualifications? Sure, Chris, I'd be very happy to help you out here. So I work for an online language academy called Swish English, where I work as the academic director. I, am a, I have a bachelor's and master's degree in history, and I'm also certified uh, to teach TESOL, acquiring a TESOL certificate, certificate four in Australia in 2016. I'm also an OET premium preparation provider, which I have acquired via the Swish umbrella. And in the past, I have acted as a Cambridge examiner. I have taught English for many years, including Australia, Vietnam, China, and now also on the online domain. And as Chris has already mentioned, I have extensive experience with IELTS, OET, and PT, making me pretty well qualified to help you pass any three of these exams. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about two of the most common tests which um, are done for uh, people in Australia, mm -hmm. or are, uh, wanting to get visas for Australia, or also wanting to enter education in Australia. We're talking about the PTE and also the IELTS test. So the PTE exam is made by Pearson, one of the largest publication and education bodies in the world, if not the largest. And PTE Academic is their domain and their entry into secure English language testing. So the PTE test it comprises of three parts. Part one being the longest is speaking and writing at 77 to 93 minutes in length. So it is fairly long but it is also the most difficult part that you get out of the way at the very beginning. Part two is the reading paper, which lasts 32 to 40 minutes. And part three is the listening paper lasting 45 to 47 minutes. So in total, the entire test lasts 2.5 to 3.5 hours, but mostly it does end up verging on the lower end of that scale. That is the PTE exam. IELTS is somewhat similar in that it is also called the English, International English Language Testing System. It's been around for a long time and many people obviously know about this test and what it is. It comprises four different parts, listening at 40 minutes, reading at 60 minutes, writing at 60 minutes, and then speaking at 11 to 14 minutes, meaning the entire test is two hours and 45 minutes. So as you can see, a similar length to what you would get with the PTE examination. So um, accents, do they uh, influence the uh, test results and um, is there a way to counter that? That's a great question, Chris, about accents. Are they considered in the speaking components? Well, the short story is, is that everyone has an accent. I have an accent. Chris has an accent. Every student's going to have a particular accent. You will not be penalized for not speaking like a, an Irish person does, a British person does, or an Australian person does, for example. After all, you are going to be non-native. That would be an unfair scoring criteria for yourself. But the important thing is, is that if your accent is deemed to be heavy, then that may impede natural pronunciation. It might also affect your intonation your word stress, et cetera, which are assessed in the scoring criteria. So the short answer is no, having an accent is fine, but you might want to, of course, make sure that you don't have an overly heavy accent or else modify it so that um, the way English flows in a spoken context actually replicates how native inflection would work best. As for the writing test, well, IELTS general, the writing tests and IELTS academic writing tests, they're the exact same length and they have the exact same amount of tasks at two. However, IELTS general, the first task is a 20 minute letter writing task and task two is a 40 minute discursive essay where you have to talk about the pros and cons to a solution, problems, the, the problems and uh, solutions to a, a given topic as well as talk about uh, the um, advantages and disadvantages to an opinion based um, um, prompt. And then for IELTS academic, the key difference for task one is that you have a 20 minute chart or graph description task, considerably more difficult and more complicated than the letter writing, but task two is the exact same at a 40 minute discursive essay. 
Now, why would you take IELTS general and why would you take IELTS academic? Well, it depends on why you are obviously immigrating in the first place. So if you're taking IELTS general, it's typically required for work or migration purposes, for nice and simple purposes. Also, that um, the score criteria is a little bit lower um, for entering a country for IELTS general. However, IELTS academic is typically required for higher education and for professional registration. So if you want to study at a college or university in Australia, the college or university will often require an IELTS academic passing score of seven or above. And also if you're looking for professional registration, aka as a healthcare professional, maybe as a lawyer or a, um, an accountant of some sort, then they will also ask for IELTS academic. So are the tests taken in person or are they taken online? Great question, Chris, that you had about the PTE and IELTS test. Can they be taken online or in person? So this is a constantly moving situation and uh, it is something that we at Swish English are obviously keeping an eye on with the recent developments in the world sphere. So IELTS can be taken currently in center if the test is, is taking place and uh, it can be taken in a handwritten or a computer-based format. IELTS have also recently released an online test known as the IELTS indicator where you can take the test from your home so that's something to look into if um, you want to obviously uh, go down that route. It does pay to be careful and actually do your homework in will the institution that accepts the exam accept the IELTS indicator test because this is an ongoing and ever evolving situation. So make sure you check that before you actually take that test. As for PTE, it is also taken in center, but it is a completely computer-based exam. There is no handwritten format. It is all done on a computer. And there is currently no online option, but like uh, IELTS, I'm sure PTE will be wanting to release and look into doing an online option in the future. So have a look at that and keep your eyes peeled. Now, this is the, the question. This is the, the, the question everyone wants to know. I get asked that... Uh, numerous times a year uh, as I'm trying to uh, provide advice to clients about um, visa options and, and, and what requirements are, I get asked which test is easier, uh, which test should I, I do? Mm -hmm. um, and and so, uh, so I, I'd like for you to give us some insight onto, onto that question. So which test is easier? Well, so far, there's no concrete evidence that any particular test is easier than the other. They, after all, are secure English language tests, so they're going to obviously need to have similar scoring criteria for similar requirements. They are testing the same language. So there's not going to be a, any massive uh, difference in terms of which one is easier objectively. However, it does depend, I think, on which format you're more familiar with. Have you prepared for the 21 PT exercises? Are you more familiar with a, a computer-based delivery? Or are you more familiar with what you've learned in terms of the IELTS test, in terms of its format? Are you okay with writing by hand? Those things are what, are what are going to make either exam easier than the other. So what I would say is, before you do any of these tests, they're both great options, is that to just study the format and the criteria and the scoring system, know either exam inside or out and prepare appropriately because that will be the one thing which will decide which exam that you think is easier or harder. You might find it hard to get your head around all the different PTE questions, but maybe you might think, oh wow, I would love to do it in a computer-based format because my handwriting isn't good or maybe I'm a faster typer than writer. Maybe I don't like speaking to an actual interlocutor doing the test itself, so therefore PTE could be an advantage to me. Those things will make either exam easier for you if you know the format. What sort of things should people be looking out for or what are some tips you might have in terms of, of uh, improving or preparing for tests? Sure. So there's many things that you can do to prepare for the IELTS and the PTE exam from the get-go. The first thing I would say, and one of the most important things I would say, would be to invest in a high-quality school or teacher. The fact is that for IELTS and PTE, that many students want to take as I want to spend as little money as possible in their preparation. Now, if you don't get a good quality school or teacher from the get go, believe it or not, you're going to more than likely spend more time, more money, and get more frustrated in your English language preparation. Why? Because for every good provider there is for um, PT and IELTS preparation, there's also several really, really bad providers. So you want to make sure that you are consistently improving from the get-go 
and you are spending those three or four months that it usually takes to pass IELTS or PDE uh, wisely and conveniently and efficiently from the very, very beginning. So invest in a high quality school or teacher from the very beginning. Once you do invest in a high quality school or teacher, they will likely assess your level in advance. Why is this important? Well, you need to know exactly where you are and your current English language level abilities, and then you'll have an idea of how you're going to get there. Once you know where you are and where you need to be, you will then have a plan about how to study appropriately and also get an indicator about how long it will take. After all, if you know exactly how long it's gonna take for you to score, to get the um, results that you need in IELTS or PTE, one, it's going to also, it's also going to make sure that you pass quicker, but two, it's going to motivate you as well. You've got a clear path to your study success, which also brings me into my next point, to give yourself enough time to prepare. I've seen many, many students who only want to spend one month or they inquire about, uh, I want to do the IELTS or PTE examination in one month's time. And for the most time, but for the most part, it's not enough time to prepare. So I would advise anyone to take at least three months to prepare for this exam. One, you need to know the format of PTE and IELTS, and two, you need to make sure that you're studying appropriately to not just improve your test-taking skills, but also to improve your general English to a high enough level that you can perform well in all four subsections. Brings me on to my next point is to study intently and consistently. If you are also taking free, free resources, you're not necessarily going to value those resources or even have a good study plan. You might go on to Google or Google Drive or WhatsApp or whatever medium you do to use to find your free resources and just find random materials and study and complete them as you go. One, you don't know if those materials are of high quality and two, you're not going to see any progression with your improvement if you're taking random materials. So I advise you to make sure that you get a good plan and you study consistently. Ideally, at least 20 hours of study a week so that you make consistent gains in that. Of course, I understand that many people can't dedicate 20 hours a week, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that study as much as you can and consistently as you can to see good results over time. So of course, it brings me on to my next point, and that is you need to also assess, see how well you are getting from your initial assessment up to the time that you take your IELTS or your PTE exam. So you need to complete mock examinations. Mock examinations are, of course, benchmarks to see how well you're doing. For example, in your initial assessment, you might have scored five in every subsection of IELTS or maybe a 50 in uh, your PTE exam. Four, four weeks later, you've been studying consistently, you've been getting advice from your teacher, and uh, you're giving yourself enough time to prepare. Take a mock exam, you can see that your score is now 5.5 or 60 in PT. You think, wow, I'm making progress. Maybe another four weeks' time, another mock exam later, you can see, wow, I'm going to be a six now. Who knows? But that's the important thing to see and motivate yourself that you are making those consistent improvements. And also, it gives you a chance to try out one of the exams in advance before you do it for real and spend a lot of money on it on the actual test day. Now, the, 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 the second, the penultimate point I also want to mention here is that one of the most essential things I want to emphasize, and that is you need to get feedback and especially get feedback on your speaking and your writing, regardless if it's IELTS or PTE. After all, you can't speak to a wall. Well, you can speak to a wall, but the wall is not going to give you feedback. You can also speak to a friend, which obviously is great, is great speaking practice advice, but your friend's not necessarily going to be qualified or experienced enough to give you feedback on what you're doing and how you can actually pass the speaking and writing, sorry, the speaking, uh, speaking parts of the PTE and the IELTS test. So you're going to want to get feedback from a qualified teacher or an IELTS or PTE expert. The same I can say for writing as well. You can obviously write great essays or great graph descriptions but you're not necessarily sure about what you're doing wrong and how you can implement that feedback to get the score that you want, which is why I emphasize that you get feedback from qualified teachers who know what they're doing, who know the exam, and can tell you what you're doing wrong to consistently improve. Final point, and one that is often overlooked by many students at an uh, intermediate or upper intermediate level, is that do not forget your general English. Of course, it's great to study for IELTS and PTE and know how to take the tests, but don't forget you need to be working on your vocabulary, you need to be working on your grammar, you need to be working on your punctuation, your pronunciation, even just learning. Uh, practicing speaking every day, practicing writing every day, it doesn't necessarily, or even reading and listening, it doesn't actually necessarily have to be 
IELTS, IELTS specific tasks or PTE specific tasks, but you're working on your soft skills and who knows how those soft skills can actually translate into your IELTS and PTE preparation, but more than likely you will still improve those sub skills such as skimming and scanning, listening for detail, and also picking up new vocabulary and grammar and also just becoming more comfortable and confident in your speaking ability. Yeah, that, that's a, a very, very solid advice. Um, so I'd like to ask you a little bit or give you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about um, the services that Swoosh provides and, and how you do help um, uh, students, uh, anyone who needs to, to improve their English uh, to achieve their goals. Of course, thank you very much, Chris. So we at Switch English are an online language academy and we have been helping students pass their exams for over seven years. We've helped thousands of students pass their OET, their IELTS and their PTE examinations. And many of them are happy now living in Australia, the UK, studying or working and uh, are very happy with their new lifestyle and also the the this the service that they got from us at swoosh english so all of our teachers are native uk teachers and our ielts teachers are ex ielts examiners as well therefore they actually know the exam incredibly well and are in a great place to give you all the tips and advice that you need to pass your ielts exam and also pass your pte examination as well so all of our packages are obviously very different, but they all involve some of these key components. The first thing you're going to get are high quality video courses. These video courses are designed by um, our ex IELTS examiner teachers, and they go through every aspect of every part of the exam in both PTE and IELTS, every aspect of listening, every aspect of reading, writing and speaking. So these are going to be step by step guides on what the activity is, how you can complete it, giving you practical examples which you, which you can practice and then take away and apply in your own time. We also offer a seven day a week writing correction service. So if you're gonna be submitting your IELTS task one or task two responses or your PTE essay responses, then you're going to get these marked seven days a week by our expert teachers. So of course, as I mentioned prior, getting feedback on your writing is essential for you to improve and get that score that you need, whether it's a 65 or a 79 plus in your PTE or a band score of six or seven in your IELTS. You want to make sure that you're getting good, high quality corrections. And of course, we offer it seven days a week, meaning that you can fit it around uh, your busy work or study schedule. You get access to sample writing answers. So for example, you might be writing a letter or you're writing a, um, an essay or you're writing a chart description task and you think, oh, I'm not actually sure about how I should go about this. I want to see a sample of what was scored really, really highly. So of course, we're gonna teach you how to write those samples, but it's a very good idea for you to, from the very beginning, to know how to structure your essays or your chart description tasks. You can look at these and you can study them and think, okay, this is how I study, this is how I structure this, this is how I put this together. And of course, then when you submit an essay or um, a chart description task, you can say, okay, well, I've scored this this highly in this. How can I improve? I'm going to look at my uh, examiner's um, assessments. I'm going to see how I've done this. Now I can compare it to the letter and think, okay, I could have done this. I could have done this. I could have done this. Doing this is going to create, give you the building blocks to consistently improving your writing skills, especially your structure. So these are essential and very, very valuable services. Of course, we offer live classes. We're a school after all, we have to offer live classes. So we offer live classes on every skill throughout the entire week. And they are taught by a variety of teachers with lots of different experience uh, who are gonna help you in every aspect of your listening, whether you're training for IELTS part one, whether you're training for um, retail lecture, whether you're training for speaking, you're training for IELTS speaking task one, two, and three, whether describing for described image for PTE. So you're gonna get classes in every different skill they're all very, very flexible. And of course, if you can't attend these classes for whatever reason, perhaps you've got irregular shift patterns, perhaps you're ill, perhaps you're busy, for whatever reason that life throws at you, all of our classes are recorded. So you can access these live class recordings at any time. You can catch up on lessons that you missed, but also in your own time, you can check out on our bat you can check out our backlog of I of uh, live class recordings and go to a skill that you might not have picked up on or maybe watch a class by a different teacher covering a different aspect means that you have a lot of material you can either watch uh, live or not live to help improve your skills in these exams.
As I've also mentioned as well, mock examinations essential for you to complete every so often to benchmark your progress. We have created a, a variety of mock examinations as part of our course. They're also integrated in the course for you to uh, complete them as milestones, but of course you're free to complete them as you want. So you can see that you are completing, um, you are uh, progressing in your PT and IELTS preparation at different uh, points in your studies and also then you can see okay well now I've done the test for myself prior to doing the test I know the format I'm now much more familiar with it therefore you will be much better at doing it on the day if you know exactly what you're going to do and you have actually practiced it prior as I mentioned, we are an online language academy, so we have the massive advantage right now that you can study from home with many test centers having been closed and many schools having been closed throughout the world. It's, um, it's very difficult for students not only to find a teacher, but also to go to a school and get quality instruction at the same time. We can offer you both from the comfort of your own home. All you need, obviously, is a working interconnection and a computer, and of course, a headset is also advisable for you to help speak and also listen as well. But yep, very, very flexible and very convenient for you. So we also like to give some bonuses as well as part of our package to see about how we can actually just show that we really care about you passing. So once you, once you sign up to one of our premium or VIP packages, you will get a study partner matching service. It's obviously better if you're studying by yourself. And of course, if you're not studying by yourself, sorry, and it can be a little bit lonely if you are doing it by yourself. So we want to match you with a study partner and we will then encourage you. I mean, you can be matched with someone from your own country, someone um, obviously of a similar level to yourself looking to take the exam at the same time as you. Therefore, you are gonna be on that same, OE, uh, same IELTS and the same PDE passing journey. So if you're matched with a study partner, you can attend classes with them, you can uh, submit writing corrections to each other, you can practice speaking with each other, it's up to yourself. But it's just that little bit extra motivation that you might want to show that you're going through this journey with someone else. We also, of course, offer 24-7 student support via our email on our social media channel. So if you have a query about um, something that might be that you have a question about how our course is run, about how a particular exam task works, about what uh, services you can acquire, then of course we want to offer you support via our LMS learning system, as well as via social media, etc. Thank you so much, Scott, for um, taking us through uh, some of the many challenges that are associated with um, English language testing. Understanding how it works is obviously the very important part of moving towards getting better results. I'd also like to say that uh, I'm very empathetic with all those people that have to try to do English testing to try and improve the grades because it's not easy. And so um, you need some support sometimes and, 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 and also it can be a, a quite a difficult process which can be frustrating. So what I'll say is I, I understand that and, and it can be difficult and that's why it can be very useful to get some professional help. And, and um, so providers like Swoosh are there to help you with that. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is that um, they talk about opportunities, making your pivot. When it comes to COVID, what, what can you do during these um, difficult times if you're uh, in lockdown, if, mm -hmm. you, uh, if you aren't able to do the work you usually do? Um, I know even in, in, the, in the migration field, uh, with the COVID lockdown, there was a couple of weeks where we were unusually quiet. And um, I found that there was also a lot of free courses. There was also a lot of CPDs. And so I took that opportunity to top up on some professional knowledge. I took the opportunity to get, get to those tasks of closing some old files and other things, which, which I wasn't able to do in my everyday. And so how I see it is in these difficult COVID times, you, you might have to actually have the opportunity to find that little bit of extra time to work on, on the English, um, and work on your English, sorry, and, mm -hmm. and then uh, get achieve a, a score which you will probably need later on whether it's to study uh, initially or whether it's to move on to a subsequent visa so there is an opportunity um, here as well and so hopefully um, what we've talked about today can, can help you with that so as once again thank you very much Scott I appreciate the time and, and the great preparation you put into this so of course, if you want to know any more information about what we offer at Swoosh English, then you can check out the first two links. The first one is the link to our IELTS packages. The second link is the link to our PTE courses. And of course, Chris at Work Visa Lawyers will be more than happy to give you some extra information about how you can pass your English, level, your English language exam, as well as get all that immigration stuff organized for yourself if you want to come and work and live in Australia. So please check out his website at his third link at workvisalawyers.com.
www.ai.com.au。